before we go to Max Kaiser, you have to understand, I'm the expert in the police state and in the covert takeover of local police, the spy networks. That's where I've done 17 years of research and, and, and pioneering areas. I bring you other pioneers like Max Kaiser, the inventor of the virtual stock exchange system used on most markets today. I bring you people like Tarpley. I bring you Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, former head of the Treasury and policy. Charlotte Isserby, head of policy, Department of Education. You know, Ron Paul, you name it. We bring all these experts on with, with some different views, but it pretty much converges on where reality's at. And you need to understand that what, what adds to this, the reason I know we're in deep trouble, because we're always hearing about Iran war, we're always hearing about collapse, we're always hearing about this. We know the globalists want this to be incremental, but... The 1.4 billion bullets, the checkpoints, the martial law preparations, uh, the digging in by governments, all of this is set up to handle a foreign World War III scenario, but also a domestic takeover, using a global crisis as the pretext to take over domestically. They've lined it all up, the spies, the checkpoints, the re-education centers. I'm not trying to scare you. I believe you have courage and will then speak out so this doesn't happen because our only hope is stopping it. That said, that's why I'm so concerned, because it's more converging than just economics and Al-Qaeda and Israel. And elections. There is a fundamental shift towards hot tyranny taking place, not just here, but in every industrialized country under this unified corporatist system that's anti-liberty. So people better get smart. People better get wise fast or it's all over. You've heard my basic breakdown, Max. Add any points you have to this, maxkaiser.com. Uh, TV host on BBC, Press TV, RT, you name it. Break down uh, your take on what I was just basically setting the table with, and then let's get into QE Unlimited. And I guess this really adds credence to your collapse hypothesis by April of next year. We're already in somewhat of a collapse, but you're saying a total collapse, and define what that is. Max Kaiser, thank you for joining us. Yo, Alex, great to be here. Yeah, 28 weeks to go uh, during that 20, next 28-week period. Looking for a total collapse. I put my my flag, planted my flag, and I'm going to stick with that uh, with that with that uh, prediction. But to follow up on this casino gulag, I just sent you a story because there's something new that I think you need to look at. Uh, Corrections Corps of America, which is the biggest private prison operator in America, they're listed on the stock exchange. They're going around America from state to state, and they're getting the local state governments to give them the business of running the prisons in those states in exchange that the states have to guarantee 90% occupancy rate at the prisons, which means that the states have to go out and arrest people to put them into the prison at, per a deal that they've made with the prison prison operator to take over the prisons from the state. So that's part of the casino gulag. You've got the state and the corporation making a deal. To, to They build and they guarantee 90% occupancy. And the only way you can do that is if you tell the police, just go arrest people. Doesn't matter what if they're guilty or not. Just arrest them, put them into jail, because that's what the deal says. And that's, that's sweeping the nation from coast to coast in America, private prisons. On the casino front, you've got Zynga, which is a virtual currency company. They are now aggressively transforming themselves to be able to do legal online gambling. That's something I've been telling you will happen. Their business model so far was a Trojan horse. It's not a very good business model unless you work up to the point where you're doing online gambling, which is what they're going to be doing now. Facebook in the UK, where I'm now in London, they're going to offer online gambling. Uh, gambling is already legal in Europe, already legal in the UK, so they'll be making money doing the gambling. So the Gulag Casino uh, economy is, is, is moving forward, and that's the big trend I see going forward. And, um, yeah, the, the, the breakdown, the quantitative easing. Quantitative easing uh, to, to infinity, as it's being called, $40 billion a month, uh, month after month to buy back, mortgage-backed securities. The, the Federal Reserve System has basically capitulated to the speculators. There's no pretense now about doing anything constructive for the economy. They only do what's best for speculators. Speculators have huge losses on their books. And to bail out the speculators, or the too big to fail banks, as some call them, the Federal Reserve is now guaranteeing 
interest rates until 2015 and to buy every losing bet on the books of the banks uh, that they have now, every losing bet that they'll make going forward for the next three years, the Fed will buy it. The Fed will do this by swapping treasury bills for bad debts, bad bonds, and expanding their balance sheet from two trillion to three trillion to five trillion, and they keep increasing that, which you could call a black hole of debt, which has to be paid in the way that it's paid in countries around the world is by imposing austerity measures. That's where the nickels and dimes are collected to pay off the debt for the uh, swap that's being made and by Max, the Fed. Yeah. And Max, even though this is destructive, that's the method of the madness. They admit it's a post-industrial system where they're expanding their profit while destroying you to make you poor so they, so they can control you. And you mentioned the incredible immorality and corruption of the big prison companies lobbying at state governments. This is in the news to give huge sentences to nonviolent people so they can get your tax money, housing them, so they can work for 20 cents an hour, driving down everyone else's wages. It is a genius plan, and we now have the biggest prison population in the world, and they're just getting started. They're now arresting mothers whose children play in the front or backyard. Uh, they're now uh, taking children for no reason, packing the prisons. The People ask, where are the concentration camps? Here they are. These are the new slave camps. And the so-called conservatives say, good, make them criminals work. Yeah, and you wonder why you don't have a job now, buddy, or why you've had your pay cut. You can't compete against 5 million people in prisons in factories right now. Exactly right. And uh, I think that what will be available in these prisons is that you'll be able to go online and you'll be able to participate in the casino economy uh, to view pages on sites like Facebook, which are then used as collateral to justify their multi-billion dollar capitalizations on the stock exchange. So we already have that in China. People in China go online and they do what's called gold mining, where they, they are slave gamers. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. We're just launching it. And I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not gonna spy on you and sell your data to the new world order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active, organize, take action, go viral, create, contribute, resist, because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com The big prison companies, there's three major ones, a lot of subsidiaries, openly lobby to throw people in jail for years for nothing. That's why they keep nonviolence in jail and release the violence, because they're hard to deal with. Uh, you know, these big correction corps people, they want the minimum and medium. They don't want the high security. And they want the violence out there scaring everybody. But the pot smoker, oh, they're going to put you to work uh, doing all sorts of data entry, not just making furniture and license plates. They do everything now. And uh, it's Shawshank Redemption. You know, where the prisoners are building the roads. People are like, good, make them prisoners build roads. You're lazy, boy. Yeah, well, you're not going to have a job building roads now. So that's what's going on. You think we're just competing with Mexico and China and India? Uh-uh. Think again, you're competing with 5 million prisoners plus, and it's growing. And Max, getting into this, I mean, they're going ahead with it. My point is, this is a planned implosion. This is a planned program of takeover by the oligarchs. They admit it. And so people like Tarpley, who's a great guy, he always wants to bring out solutions. The globalists don't care. They're in control. They're going ahead with this. Tell me if you agree or disagree, and then break down for us, uh, what what this unlimited QE is going to mean, your analysis of exactly where this new QE, where this th this new money transfer to the bankers is going, Max Kaiser. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll answer both questions. I, I want to follow up on the uh, prisoner story. You're right. The uh, 
the, the prison labor in America is becoming a big problem. The same governors of these states who are signing these deals with the private prison operators are also complaining to the federal government that the prison operators are take are competing for jobs. The, the prison population now is uh, people are getting arrested to go to prison to uh, as a way to participate in the labor force. That's about, and they're working for a dollar, two dollars a day. But to follow up on the gaming. Uh, aspect. I just sent you an email to a link to a story here. Chinese prisoners forced to slay dragons, mine gold, and online games. Uh, prisoners in a labor camp in northern China are forced to slay dragons and battle wizards in online games to earn virtual gold that the prison guards sell for real currency. Uh, and this is uh, this is how, this is what's going to happen in America with companies like Zynga and others. You go to prison for as part of the deal with the prison operator, then you're forced to play games to earn the credits in the games that are then converted to real money by the way you predicted this five years ago on my show how did you do it because max here it is chinese prisoners forced to slay dragons mine gold and online games because then they're made to go to state run or other run things for basically fake advertising hits that never really happen just like facebook caught with bots visiting its sponsors ads just everything is fraud based it's, it's total scam right well when you introduce me you say okay i introduced the virtual specialist and the virtual market that is the basis for virtual trading for virtual goods online so i i know the market very very well and my technology you know, there's an interesting history there, but uh, well, I'm not going to get into it. But here you see in China, the game market where you can play these virtual environments and you earn virtual trinkets and virtual swords, etc. In these multi-level player games, uh, they then can convert those into cash, into yuan or other currencies. And then that money is taken from the from the from the guards and the people who run the prison and there's so there's a market gamer. yuppies and trendies playing video games and paying money to get trinkets and paying money to be part of this they are financing slaves in chinese commie death camps doing this so 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 the false reality is now supplanting the real reality and is slave driven Right, people to play Farmville, which is a Zynga game through Facebook, and they give them five hundred dollars to so they can raise virtual strawberries. There are prisoners in China that are being forced to to trade on these exchanges to make virtual products and virtual farming, so that the prison operators can cash in the money, the gold, so they're earning as a way to increase. It's a slave labor racket, and they. Play these things 24/7, and there are stories now every week where people in Asia who are being slave gamers are are playing three or four days in a row, and then they just drop dead from exhaustion. And this this is happening almost. Well, this on a is also the beginning now. of being put into the matrix. This is people plugging in, becoming programmed. We, we, we've got an 18-minute segment coming up, Max. So I want to really get into the technicals because I know you've analyzed this Federal Reserve announcement, the private banking cartels announcement. It's virtual money. The Federal Reserve deals on virtual money. It's another big virtual game. Sick of the globalist eugenesis control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at Infowars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. We got Max Kaiser at MaxKaiser.com joining us. We'll also give you his Facebook, Twitter, other sites here in a moment. Uh, any other sites you'd like to plug. But I want listeners to understand, I spend all my time trying to understand this and trying to be accurate. I mean, we don't get up here and go, oh, well, our listeners will like it more if we like Mitt Romney. So 
you know, let's say nice things about him, or people will like us if we say nice things about Obama. It's just, okay, what's the truth, and let's cover it. Uh, quite frankly, if I had to calculate and sit here and mince words, I couldn't do it. There's no teleprompters, there's no talking points, there's just research. And I look at articles like this one. This is out of the Times of Israel. I don't want to be the complicit in an Israeli strike on Iran, says U.S. Army chief. Martin Dempsey warns that while it may delay the Iranian reactor program, an Israeli military campaign could also unravel international sanctions on the Tehran regime. Well, it's a lot more than that. And I want to get Max's geopolitical take on it. He was trying to finish up about this virtual reality. That's what it is. It's Ponzi scheme operators that with, with fractional reserve banking, for every dollar you have in the bank, you know, they're loaning out $10, roughly. Now they've transcended that to just total derivatives, and they don't care if you never had a deed with them and that they don't own your house. They just come take it, and the court rules it's theirs. Uh, this is the type of stuff that we're dealing with now where they're just setting the precedent where foreign banks can steal trillions and not get in trouble. Karzai can steal $1.6 billion, get caught lying to Congress, doesn't get in trouble. Wells Fargo can be caught laundering $376 billion in narcotics, running the narcotics aircraft. Nobody gets in trouble. They pay less than a 1% fine. It's like saying, oh, you got caught kidnapping a little kid and chopping their head off. That's a $25 ticket. I mean, it, it's, it, it's a new kind of corruption. I've studied history. There's been some bad ones. This one is, is, is a bunch of globalists exempt who meet in these big boardrooms where no one can be blamed and everyone has plausible deniability. I mean, it's, it's, it's madness. And it will come down. It's got Titanic written all over it. Max Kaiser, I want you to really finish your point you're trying to make going to break because when music starts, then the Skype can't go over it. It causes this weird interlacing problem. So the last 10 seconds of your saying wasn't heard. Finish up with that, and then looking at this, your collapse prediction, getting into analyzing where the virtual QE is going, another transfer to the bankers. The media will tell us it's our debt, and people will buy it. I mean, they'll tell us Al-Qaeda's coming when the government runs Al-Qaeda. I mean, if, if people just had any smarts, they'd know we're already living in a virtual reality. This show, your website, what we do are a few of the islands of half-sanity. I mean, this is really out of control, and 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 now it, it, it's becoming even crazier. Max Kaiser. Yeah. Okay. If you compare virtual currencies that you find on game sites like Zynga, Farmville, etc., compared to the U.S. dollar and what happens at the Federal Reserve Bank, they have one very important, uh, common characteristic. Neither one of these currencies pays an interest rate. They pay zero percent interest rate. Now, why is this important? The interest rate is the price of money. It tells you what money is worth, is the interest rate that comes attached to it. When people in America now go to the job to work for a living, they get paid in dollars that have no interest rate attached to them whatsoever because they have no value whatsoever. They're being debased by $40 billion a month now due to quantitative easing, on top of quantitative easing one and two, on top of a multi-hundred trillion dollar derivatives market, on top of central banks all over the world printing money uh, willy-nilly every single second of every single day at 0% interest rate. So you have only speculation to deal with, no real honest living, no way for banks to make an honest living lending money for a return based on a higher interest rate because all interest rates across the board are zero. They loan money back to central banks who give them a subsidy that's taken out of the hide of the population through austerity measures. Yes, that's true, but that's not a functioning economy. That's not a working economy. So 0% interest rates are the telltale sign that well, you're not dealing with a currency that has intrinsic value whatsoever. And one currency that does have intrinsic value, it also pays no interest, but over the past 5,000 years, it has proven itself to be intrinsically valuable is gold and silver. And of course, they're continuing to do extremely well, as we've been saying on your show for a number of years, because as the Reserve Bank continues this Ponzi scheme of paying off bad debt by printing new money, by taking all this toxic securities off the balance sheets of banks and replacing it with new money, uh, then the people who own gold around the world, of course, are increasing their positions. And as I said on your show last time, the wild card here is China. China is surreptitiously accumulating vast quantities of gold. The last time the government formally announced what their gold position was, it was a, a surprise 500-ton increase. My sources tell me that by the end of the year, they'll come out and say 
We don't have 1,000 tons of gold. We have 2,000 tons of gold officially on our way to becoming four or 5,000 tons of gold because they realize that when the global implosion occurs between now and April 15th of next year, my window of implosion, the countries with the gold are the ones who are going to survive the best. The U.S. ostensibly has 8,000 tons of gold, although there is a lot of debate as to whether that's been loaned out and they don't really own that gold anymore. China's going to be on their way to owning three or 4,000 tons of gold. Uh, Germany's got 3,000 tons. The IMF has a large gold position. Uh, that's what's going to matter once you have the implosion of these paper market cur fiat currency positions and they have to sit down and figure out, okay, what's the new currency grade? And they have to uh, mark to market all this paper against gold, like they did at Brenton Woods after World War II, and their, the price to adjust to account for all this paper means that gold at the minimum, at the very, very minimum, would be $7,000 an ounce. You can say it could be a lot higher than that, but at the very minimum, if you take all the fiat money that's sloshing around on the, on the Fed's balance sheet and in the system, and you were to monetize that in a way that would account for all of the excess slush funds that are sloshing around, you come up with a revaluation at gold $7,000 an ounce. And that's where we're headed. That's what's going to happen between now, some kind of total breakdown and remonetization of gold between now and April 15th of 2013. That's my window. That's my target. Um, so <laughs> it would, the, the, the triggers that we mentioned uh, on the last show, Alex, you know, we went through a number of triggers because in the globe today, there are all kinds of things that are in the background. The Iran-Israeli situation obviously is heating up. That's a potential trigger. Uh, you've got the South African labor unrest, which is shutting down platinum mining. Platinum has now been skyrocketing. That's a trigger. The LIBOR scandal. Remember, Barclays and all these money center banks were found to be uh, manipulating LIBOR. That has yet to fully blossom into the global scandal that it will be. That's a multi-hundred billion, trillion dollar scandal uh, going forward. You've got drought. Here's key, Alex. He's very, very key what I'm about to say. Before the Arab Spring, before the revolution in Egypt, before what we saw in Cairo, the price of wheat had got to $8.50 a bushel, which means that the average Egyptian was paying 40 to 50% of their income on food. Well, guess where the price of wheat is now because of quantitative easing, because of all the lax money figures around the world. Price of wheat is now $9.50 a bushel. It's at an all-time high. That means that these people are starving again, even worse than they were before the massive revolutions that happened. And is that because of speculation price. or is it also because of just basic dollar devaluation? Dollar devaluation, but remember, when you keep interest rates at zero, the cost of borrowing to speculate is zero, because that, that's what I mean. When so I they've say created a climate where they can totally take over. Here's my question. What do you expect to play out, not just by next April? Describe what this total collapse looks like, and then what you see as possible futures going out, because as Brzezinski's admitted three years ago, and again in his book this year, People are awakening to the shadow government, the banking cartel. They're not going to be able to just put in new puppets in England or Europe or here. They're announcing a banking dictatorship in Europe, admitting a super federal system over the countries that you and I talked about many years ago. So now so much of this is out in the open. Uh, do they think the domestic police states they've set up are going to be able to protect them during this conversion to total tyranny? The, the, it goes back to the beginning of the conversation, Alex. The, the, the prison uh, business is booming. America's got the biggest prison population in the world. The prison business is booming, and they're, they're, it's like a funnel. They're just channeling people into these prisons where they enter this casino gulag economy. And that's, that's where we're headed, and that's what people need to resist. And, that's and then your answer. sentence is, here's the LA Times, your sentence is to slay 500 dragons, which would take 10 years on the world of Warcraft. You then go play games uh, on there, clicking on ads for people that companies have sold ads to, and they have contracts to have prisoners click on the ads. I mean, and they, Facebook got caught with robots clicking on them, so now they won't even need humans, so just get rid of them entirely. I mean, this is just, this is insane. Right, Virtual, virtual mining and virtual farming, because it deals with electrons and the cost of electrons is zero, it's a highly, it's a big profit business. That's why they, the prison labor is not going to be building roads and the prison labor is not going to be, be weaving baskets. They're going to be digitally online participating in games because the cost of producing games and the cost of converting 
your time as a prisoner playing games into a, a virtual currency that can be converted to dollars or yen or, or other currencies yeah. is, is fantastically more profitable than to go out and build a road because building a road is still you have to get the tar, you have to get the picks, you have to go out there into the sun. It actually costs money. And so the you have to know what you're doing. You have to compete. But instead, you're just mega bankers putting cancer viruses in everybody's vaccines and fluoride in their water to dumb them down. And you just got everybody bowing to you because you've got unlimited digital currency that they pay you in labor to be able to use. You know, I saw an article in ABC News last right, Friday. Let's just cut, cut in for a second. That, take that thing that you just said, apply to the Federal Reserve. If you have a job that's not in prison, you working at your local fast food restaurant, if they pay you in U.S. dollars that pay 0% interest rate, they're paying you in a gaming currency. It has no value. That's what I'm saying. These dollars, whether it's a U.S. dollar from the Fed or it's a Zynga dollar from an online gamer, they're equivalent. And they're so now they're going to merge the two. Yeah, absolutely. But just stopping there again, Max Kaiser, inventor of the virtual trading specialist system that's the backbone of much of this system today. It's kind of like creating the hydrogen bomb. I'm sure you're proud of yourself. I'm just joking. It's how they apply it. But, but I mean, Max, expanding on this, last Friday I saw an ABC News article. Guys, will you print it for me? Because I had it in here on the weekend, but I can't find it. I meant to cover it yesterday, and it was court rules, police can be barred for too high an IQ. Now, I've seen this story more than 100 times the last 17 years on air. I see it all the time, but this guy lost a suit, and they told him, they said, you've got too high an IQ, and then I saw law enforcement websites defending it saying, smart people ask questions, and you get bored, and they basically admitted in these law enforcement sites and magazines that we want robots. So here are guys so dumb they say it's not good to be smart and agree with the federal court ruling that if you have over a 100 IQ, that's average, folks, you can't be a cop. Now, folks, it's not just cops. They want dumb people. That's why they put fluoride in the water, which Harvard admits brain damages you. The elite are so out of control, they're trying to create a suboid cattle group that they literally mine and feed. And now the globalists have said our new issue of the magazine coming out breaks this down that they don't even want us anymore. They're gonna go completely to robots that work on robots that work on robots with the autonomous drones and all the rest of it. So Max, put your futurist cap on. Look into the future. Where is all this leading? Because the elites are now saying, we don't even want them in the prisons. Let's just kill everybody. Well, it's heading, you don't have to look to the future. Look to the past. Look to the way Europe was run before the invention of the printing press, before the enlightenment, before Diderot invented the encyclopedia. You had dumb serfs working for as indentured serfs for the Lord and Master. That's where we're going back to. The, the, the rich, the elite, they never liked the idea of having a middle class. They don't need a middle class. They would prefer just having a very small group of extraordinarily wealthy and everyone else is a serf. And that's where we're headed. We're and now they've, the said, now they've said, hey, let's just release a bioweapon and kill everybody. We go into underground bases and come out of here later. And everybody's dead. And I'm telling you, Max, I study them. They're going ahead with that plan. As soon as they've got their police state in place, as soon as the autonomous drones and robots are in place, they're going to release the bioweapon. Just well, be I, <laughs> I have a very, you know, it's, a, it's ironic because the, the creation of the middle class in the Middle Ages was the result of the bubonic plague. The bubonic plague wiped out half the population. It was only then that the lords of the manor actually had to compete for labor, and they started to pay serfs money, real money. Well, it knocked out was, a lot of the entrenched elites. It killed a lot of the elite. That was a, a big plus, yeah. Well, it, cre well it, it knocked out the labor force, and they created this idea of paying labor, which created something called the middle class. So, I mean, the bioweapon destruction you're describing, if it, it, it could have a silver lining in that it could wipe out the population to the degree where people actually have to pay for labor again. But, of course, that would be a catastrophic uh, way to but get to But they didn't have result. robots in 1400. <laughs> well, that's correct. The, the robots, in, they didn't have those in 1400, correct. <laughs> Well, Max, I'm telling you, it's a very dark future we're facing, and people laugh today. Some of them out there, they're not going to be laughing in the future if we can't turn this around. What's your take uh, on on where they sent the QE3? Because, you know, it, it, it's, it's been different goodies, you know, not just free money, but also, you know, just giving the money and, 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 and buying crud derivatives, which you've pointed out. They've accelerated the bailouts into derivatives. The problem is bigger than ever. Well, I mean, it, when Obama came into office in 2008, 
he, there was a fork in the road. He could have either bailed out the banks or bailed out the homeowners. He chose to bail out the banks because there was a theory there of the multiplicity of money effect, that if you bail out the banks, it increases more jobs, ultimately more growth in the system because of the fractional reserve system, the way it's constructed. And uh, there, But that was a mistake because had he actually just written off 90% of all mortgages in America, of the, the people who own the mortgages, It'd not the banks, less. it would have cost much less. Because at the time they said, well, if you did that, it would have cost something like $12 trillion, and that's too expensive. Well, guess what? They are now working on spending and giving away and bailing out and printing upwards of $20 trillion. So the, 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 the cost now of bailing out the bankers, and by the way, that's done nothing to revive the housing but, market. But Max, at least, at least in 08, they admitted it was money to bankers. Now the media is like, you lazy scum, we have to give you more money. They've actually spun it in Europe and here that it's that, that, that it's our debt when our debt's only 15 trillion. <laughs> well, they need scapegoats, right, Alex? Mm -hmm. uh, as they, they ramp up the uh, incinerators to get rid of the oversupply of people, they need scapegoats. We've seen that movie before. Yeah, I'm telling you, uh, you know, you knew George Soros. You've worked at the highest levels a lot of this. I mean, you know these people, some of them. I mean, what's wrong with them? Because I don't think they're going to get out of what they're creating. I mean, th things don't always go the way they want. I, I've, I've explained my, my thoughts on this before. You're dealing with the mentality of the suicide banker. It's similar to the suicide bomber. The suicide bomber who blows themselves up in the name of their fundamentalist, theocratic, religious, extremist view. Suicide bankers like Jamie Dimon, Lloyd Blankfein, Bob Dimon. They blow themselves up and the people around them in the belief of their market fundamentalist views that, uh, that are informed by a misreading of things like Adam Smith. They selectively read these things and to support their uh, market fundamentalist view. And they believe they're doing God's work. They're, they're, that's, that's what you're dealing with, a suicide banker. And they, they are going down that path and they're taking the entire economy down with them. And there's no doubt they're destroying the economy. There's no doubt we've been in a depression. There's no doubt they're about to make it a lot worse. Uh, no, and that, there, there's no doubt that the economy is, 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 is extremely fragile, that the unemployment numbers are continuing to look horrible, that the underlying dependence on food stamps and government handouts is increasing uh, exponentially. The student loan bubble, another potential tr uh, trigger, Alex. You know, the subprime bubble was a trillion dollar bubble that burst and caused problems. The student loan bubble is a trillion dollar plus bubble that's on the verge of busting. That's another potential trigger that could overnight uh, wipe out an entire um, class of individual and cause a problem. You also have uh, huge problems in the flash crash market, the program trading, the high frequency trading. You know, these reports are coming out every day now that the system is being completely uh, dominated by computers trading in billionths of a second in ways that are adding so much stress and so much complication and so much potential disaster scenarios uh, that professionals are walking away. Professional hedge funds, many hedge fund managers. Oh, no, the head of, I mean, all the big heads are starting to get out of it. So many of them. They walk away. They walk away because the risks are too great. It's like putting your hand into a blender, you know, and expecting to come out with something other than a bloody stump. It, it, the risk and reward is, is, is not favorable, and they're just not trading. They're walking away from this nightmare. What we're watching is a revolution of evil. We're watching a revolution of fraud. We're watching a revolution of insanity and a revolution of false reality and, 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 and Ponzi scams absorbing the real world. This is a matrix like the birth of the matrix. Everybody wired into computers, people only caring about sitcoms and sports, while the real world goes on around them and drones kill whole villages for no reason. I mean, we are entering, I, I, there's articles pouring out where all the big pharma companies know most of their drugs actually hurt people and don't help them. And the vaccines, they're putting the stuff in the vaccines to spread the disease so they can sell more. And it's admitted, and nobody cares, it's admitted the fluoride's killing us, so they add it. I mean, it's all just funny. It's, it's like a bunch of crazy people have taken over. Well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll say something and I'll mention something. You're probably not going to like it, though because it's very, very kind of uh, sub subsurface type stuff. But 
You know, I gotta, I gotta say that I am. I, I spent the last weekend attending the Bitcoin 2012 conference here in London, and on, on the surface, it sounds doesn't sound good. But when you get into what Bitcoin is really all about, Alex, it really is the currency of the resistance. Basically, if we are entering into an environment of 360 degrees of surveillance. Of of this of, of us being surveyed every click of the mouse every every web page review every email totally read walking totally outside surveyed. we're being face scanned right if that's where we're headed then Bitcoin which is which is the value of Bitcoin is entirely tied to its crypt, cryptological uh, content its cryptology as a currency and therefore it really could be the currency of resistance going forward. On the surface, it's it's hard to get there because you say, okay, it's a digital currency, and we just talked about how bad digital currencies are, and you know, it's it's a computer-driven currency, and we just talked about how bad that is, but once you get down into the surface a little bit, you drill into what's really going on with Bitcoin, you find out that there's this thriving global community. Well, I'll say this, there's a lot of globalist connected groups I won't mention that, that do not like the word Bitcoin. They ban it on these government front sites out there that we know are government. Okay, well, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's a good sign, right? I mean, because the, the globalists hate Bitcoin because it's completely cryptologically, it's, it's no cost transaction. You can move money around at zero cost. Uh, it's the currency itself has a quote like any other currency. So it's like $11.80 for Bitcoin, but that's not the main thing. The main thing is you can zip in and out of Bitcoin for z almost zero. Well, listen, cost. we're gonna have to get you back on soon to talk about that but uh real quick what's your bottom line on war uh right now with iran i mean is is that more saber rattling or well i mean it's a fast way to increase the prison population it's like the, the prison owners are not happy with the rate at which they're increasing the prison population so let's start a few wars because that'll increase prison population exponentially that's all that, that's where you make your money in the globalist how does a war start uh, uh make a bigger prison population but with we're prisoners of war, you know, with prisoners of war, are our are, are, are legion, they're huge. Sure, we, also the contracts, the no bids, all of it. Very intriguing, Max Kaiser, maxkaiser.com. Give us your other websites. Uh, well, it's maxkaiser.com, and oh yeah, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, I'm trying to get more Twitter followers, so follow me on Twitter. Absolutely, we are too, it's important to have full spectrum attack against the globalists. Max Kaiser, thank you so much, always informative. Oh, my pleasure. Talk to you soon. All right, there goes Max. Always great having him. Skype was breaking up a bit, but it was still powerful information. We'll be covering more of this on the Nightly News tonight, 7 o'clock Central, PrisonPlanet.tv. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. <laughs>